Hey, what is up? Welcome back, Design Squad. Welcome to another Tuesday, another Design Tool Tuesday, where I'm going to share with you at least one design tool or method or resource which should make your design workflow better in one way or another. And today we're going to talk about type. We're going to talk about fonts. We're going to talk about typography in general, because it's such a very tricky subject to master. But today I'm going to share with you something which you can use almost as an inspiration to how to use typefaces or how to pair the typefaces better. And I'm talking about Typewolf. And Typewolf is a resource where there is the best cases of different fonts being used in the industry. So for example, these cases like Patagonia design and Libby Conley, as you can see just a few here, and you can see immediately what fonts did they use and how did they use it. There are quite a few case studies on this site of different usage, and it's all for you to get inspired. But how I use it personally and how I try to match the different fonts is I'm just picking the specific typeface like a tag, as you can see, it all has tags. And there are just too many cases for you to cover unless you want to make like a habit of covering one case per day, perhaps you can just literally scroll down this service, you can find the top most popular fonts on Typewolf, meaning these are the trendiest at the moment. And some of them are quite old ones, some of them are newer ones. But some of some of these you are definitely going to recognize. So let's say if I'm going to click in and just see exactly what we can take, like Times New Roman, the go to Windows font, for example, or Futura, uh, Gotham Avenue, stuff like that. For example, if I pick Avenue, which I like personally to use in a lot of different bits, I can get a lot of different a similar fonts. If I don't have a license, I could take that. I can exactly see what matches closest on a type kit so I can make it web friendly. I can also see what's alternative on Google fonts. And that's a paid guide you can actually opt in for that. And font pairing, for example, what can you pair with the Avenue? And it's like, let's say century school book, the best bit that you're going to get a specific pair example of how it could look like how your thing could look like. So as you can see, the Ryland serif, the serif typography on the top above, and Avenir is actually down below and they look pretty damn well together. So you immediately can tell that Avenir being so kind of like a very clear lines and very straight lines could actually contrast well with let's say a serif which has a bit more of a playful look to it, you can see even here, you could just take the souvenir one and your buttons could be the avenue, let's say it's almost like you can immediately understand that avenue here is an accent font rather than the, like a dominant font, let's say even here, for example, every single one very serify headlines immediately work with, with avenue being as a subtitle as a call to action text. This is one, let's say my takeaway, just even looking at it immediately. And as you can see, you also get some history about it and who's a designer behind it. Because some of us are proper, you know, design nerds, typography nerds, you might want to look into it and research exactly where it came from. But one thing what I wanted to actually check out just before I clicked on the avenue is the top fonts. Now you could follow the trends, you could follow what's most popular and just use it. Because that's what let's say users are used to. But when you end up with a lot of different designs, which kind of look the same, especially lately, because we have dribble where all those designs just the same themes are used. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you know, when you design let's say type, and if you're into type, chances are you're doing more creative effort than just UX and finding what's the you know, how to improve user experiences. And this is a dynamic list, which is going to be updated, as you can see the cases, it's based on the cases of really good examples. So you can immediately set let's say GT America is 21 cases. And year by year, it basically splits different bits. And you can see exactly who was let's say in top three across the different bits. And I can see that it's a pair or a pair if I'm pronouncing it right. That's one of the fonts which has been around for some time. And it's looks pretty damn good on its own. And I can just see what's the greatest pairings in this service, you can actually pair it really well with a lot of different things. For example, this one nylon example, it has Basetica, a Perku, it has a Perkumono, a D. And you can see that this is a website which use all those fonts in very nice way. Like it's very common, very trendy look for these times, you know, very flat with a touch of vintage to it, very simple outlook, but still modern. I like that the offer behind Typewolf also provides some compilations of different bits of how the fonts work well together. And the example, and to be entirely honest, you know, pairing of the fonts is one thing, 
The totally different thing is, for example, finding an alternative to Helvetica, a big font. You see it in, let's say, traffic signs in some states. You see it in, let's say, in a lot of print. You see it in a lot of different material, digital material, iOS, things of that nature, even if it's, let's say, a branch of it like Helvetica New. But you see Helvetica a lot. And, you know, sometimes you might not have a license for that. Let's say the universe is my go-to alternative to Helvetica personally. But just in case you want to know what's the alternative, you can find it or just how to use it purely from the example itself. Because again, pairing is one thing, using it well is totally different thing. You're taking substantially more variables than just a few variables when making those decisions. And so here is, for example, it's very newspapery, very kind of like old school way. I would like an app like that for my, let's say, note taking or something like that. The look and feel for this would be amazing. And so it's a good inspiration that I could just take universe and maybe get inspired by this. Maybe it's highlights what I like the most. Maybe it's the bold colors and just use in my next app. Maybe I'm going to make a to do list app or note taking app and I'm going to use this type of outlook. As mentioned before, it's definitely worth bookmarking and having it. It's very, very important to keep up with the typefaces and, you know, the basics of a design. If you get typefaces right, you are way ahead of any other designer by just exposing yourself to great compilations, great creations of uh, different typefaces, how they paired, what sort of other visual means are used, you're going to become a better designer. So I hope it's useful. If so, give a like, subscribe to his channel. Stay tuned for our next Tuesday, for our next Design Tool Tuesday. And on that note, I'll see you next time.